Buckle up for another episode of Ghost Facers, a supernatural rewatch podcast. My name is Richard. Sitting shotgun as always is my brother in podcasting, Reed. Yes, just do the episode. Are you all right? I'm. F- hey, who's the, who's stand behind you, man? You got there's a creepy lady standing behind you. There is nobody. It's Halloween. We got all these decorations of creepy lady decorations. Are you drunk? Are you drunk? I told you to stop drinking that bagged milk. It's fine. I, just, I drove over here with my milk. That's my mom. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Let's get into it. Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're missing ghosts! We're not just we're not! We're ghosts! Ghost Facers! Stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're missing nightmare! We're missing dread! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're facing faceless, we're facing dead. Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're discussing season seven, episode barely eighteen. No, not like this. <laughs> like it's the first time I've made that joke. I know. I think that makes it worse. <laughs> I think I do it every time. Yeah, that's not good. Nope. Yeah. I'm good at comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Party on, Garth. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a review. <gasps> a five star review, no less. Well, good. Otherwise, we wouldn't read it. I mean, we probably would. Yeah, we'll read anything, man. I swear to God. I mean, we've gotten both one star and five. And we yeah. read both. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, fair. anywhere in between, probably not. It's fair I can't d- guarantee anything. Fair dinkum, baby. Fair dinkum. Ar nar. Ar nar. Ar From Grilled Panini via Apple Podcasts USA. It's from a Grilled Panini. From a Grilled Panini. That's not a username. This is a review from a Grilled Panini. I mean, if there's anything that's going to have a comment about you and I, it's going to be food. Remember when it was like early days of smart devices or whatever, and you'd see someone like post a tweet from their fridge or something. Oh, yeah. This is like the Panini Press. They're like also tweeting. I love that. Xing. Yes. Oh, my God. Wow. God, that sucks. You're what so- a stupid fucking thing. Oh, I totally X'd last night. <laughs> yeah. I totally had X. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, five-star review with the subject A-plus podcast. Oh, thanks. They go on to say, hilarious banter, lots of thirst, mad respect for women. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What more could you need? <laughs> it almost feels like it undercuts it when you say, hey, how much do they respect women? They, they've got mad respect for yeah, women. Yeah. It kind of sounds like a denial. Like, how could they be bad guys? They have mad respect yeah. for women. <laughs> I think bitches are equal to dudes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking love chicks. Yeah. We think broads are, are respectful. Yeah. Yeah, they got a real thing for the dames. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Uh, Thank you very much, Grilled Panini. Was that it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, Grilled Panini. Yeah, much appreciated. Yeah. (laughs) It's time for the Supernatural Sandwich. (laughs) That was a pressing review. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Or hit the presses, this review came in. <laughs> oh, God. I work in media. That now. was depressing. <laughs> uh, I work in the news. I got to, it's always coming yeah, back. That's, that's cool, man. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. New, I'm a news man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a news people. Uh, I'm this... just a simple country news people, man. <laughs> uh, this episode aired March 30th, 2012. My God. Who could... they, they said it couldn't be done. <laughs> You're in my world now. They were so preoccupied with whether or not they could. Yeah. End of quote. This is the Oppenheimer of episodes. Oh, yeah. Now I am become March 30th. (laughs) Destroyer of episodes. (laughs) This episode was written by Adam Glass. Yeah. Don't throw uh, rocks in Adam Glass. Yeah. Adams that live in... uh... (laughs) Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, directed by a Phyllis Screech. Nice. Hell, yeah, fuck yeah. That's is. the sound of, like, dragging a Phil stone Screech. on Adam Glass. Whoa. Screech. 
Nature. Nature. Uh, viewed by an estimated one point. Uh, I liked last week's episode. And we were down to like, what, 1.6 or something? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to say one point. I gotta say 1.7 something. 1.7 what? Fuck yeah. <laughs> 1.7 what? Oh, sorry. I thought you said 1.71. 1. No, I said 1.7. 1.76. Close. 1.78. That was close. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Close enough. Hell yeah. For comfort. Easy. Uh, let's watch the <laughs> promo. See if maybe that gave us a little help this week. Real big missed opportunity with this promo. Why? They, they've got a cool song, and then they have the thing that says Hunt Drunk, but then they don't show any clips of them, like, because this Being episode drunk. has a few scenes of them, like, whoa, <laughs> like, hiccup, you know, like, sure. They yeah. should have had, like, interspersed some of that in with some of the action y stuff. Missed Fair. opportunity. But in a fun, it's fine. It's a fun promo. It's I fine. <laughs> All right, let's get to international titles. Sure. So this episode title is a reference to the Wayne's World characters Garth, yeah. who was created as an SNL skit in 1988. Yeah, Wayne. Wayne. <laughs> oh, wow, what the fuck just happened to you? I had the chip that I ate before we started recording went in my in my esophagus. You, you damn fool. <sighs> Worth it. Uh, Wayne Campbell and Garth Algar are metalheads who performed a cable public access show from Wayne's basement. They would introduce themselves at the beginning of each show by saying, party on Wayne. Party on Garth. That's right. Foxy. So good. Great movie. Great skit. Better movie than skit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Wayne's World 2, still pretty solid. Yeah. What I also love is that the voices that they use is just Canadian voices. Yeah. Yeah, they are. It is just no like, stairway. Yeah, like it's literally just Mike Myers is specifically doing like a bro, like from like the eighties Canadian. Like, he's just he's he's just being a guy sitting in his basement in Scarborough. Yes, yes. a thousand yeah. percent. Yes. <laughs> All right, we've got two titles this week. Okay. So Germany and Hungary. That's right, ya boy. Are we starting with Germany? No. Oh, <gasps> we're starting with Hungary. Correct. Okay. Um, is it called? Is it called like drunk hunting? Broader. Oh, uh, a drinking ghost, a booze ghost, alcohol Broader. ghost. Broader. Ghost. Close. Oh no, spirit. Uh, more descriptors. Uh, 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 uh drink spirit. It removes drink. <laughs> Spirit. What's the other thing? Spirits. No. What's the no? What's the other thing about this ghost? Japanese spirit. <laughs> no, no, no. It's invisible enemy. Oh, okay. It was hungry. It really could have gone out of the way. <laughs> Japanese spirit. <laughs> no, the episode's called Japanese drunk. <laughs> I Ugh. love the German title. Okay, the German title, are we like close or do they pick a weird thing? Oh, no, they double down. I would say they're more oh, okay. the title than the title is. Okay, an old ally. No, why? Well, it's just a Japanese ghost. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they're more the English title than the English title is. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time to party, Garth? More. Um... Garth, what have we said about the party? <laughs> More. Uh, Garth is back. No, that's farther away. Um, uh, more like, more like Garth cooks, baby. Right, anyways, you're you're too far from it now. Well, I, I, I uh, once I say it, you'll you'll understand. <laughs> it's it's with dashes. It's Garth's world party time. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I love the idea that Germans just fucking love Wayne's World. <laughs> that seems like the least German thing for them. I to know. Do. It's like, we know how to party. <laughs> we have seen your, how you say, Wayne's World. Yeah. We love this comedy. <laughs> we think it's party time excellent. 
I couldn't believe it. It's literally a like Garth's World Party Zeet excellent. Like that it Garth's World Party, party Time, time excellent. excellent. The, I never in a million years No. <laughs> it's more the episode than the episode title. That's <laughs> to the point where it makes less sense. Yes. Yeah. Some may say maybe Germany went too far. I mean For the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Gulp. <laughs> Jesus. The Beatles. The shitty Beatles. <laughs> Are they any good? No, they suck. <laughs> good Lord. Just Garth's world. It's yeah. just not a pun. No. <laughs> Jesus. Why is it that when you kill the man in passion... <laughs> Where's the line? They're like, why is it when uh, uh, a crime of passion? That that line from the uh, Al Bundy does on the in like Wayne's World. Oh fuck, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Featured music from this episode. Oh boy, what a fucking needle drop! It's Poison by Bell Biv DeVoe. When. When fucking Garth shows up. Oh, oh, sorry, right, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That girl is poison. That her, that, I mean, that whole section's great. Fucking incredible. Yeah. So good. TV Guide describes this episode as, Dean and Sam help Garth battle Shoujo, a Japanese creature sent to seek revenge on enemies. Making their task more difficult is that the fact that the Shoujo can only be seen when the viewer is drunk. Yeah. Shoujo, Jojo. Oh, Shoujo. No. <laughs> no, it's the cartoon. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing Shoujo, no, Jojo. Jo, jo. You overshot the Mo cartoon. Jojo, jo, jo. That's You the... overshot the I'm cartoon. I'm doing that, but with Shoujo. You... It's not racist if it's a cartoon. The cartoon does not have an accent that thick. You uh, overshot. Jojo, Jojo. <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> Are we bad people? <laughs> no, because their intent is good. Yeah, that's yeah. Intentions are good. Yeah, they pave the way to heaven. That's famously. correct. Yeah. See, you get it. Good. Yeah, yeah. But before we talk about our intentions, why don't we open up Dad's journal and learn about some of the real world lore? Let's see what the lore says about Shoujo. Oh, I'll show Joe yeah. if you show Joe. Scorlet Johansson. You show Joe uh. first. <laughs> Scorlet. Scorlet Joe Johansson. Hansen. Yeah. Shoujo. Yeah. yeah. You know her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, tried, I was trying to keep that going. I couldn't. No. She doesn't show up to set. No, Joe. Shoujo. I'm going to you to take, I'm gonna need you to take this so much more seriously. You're in the wrong. Does it look like I fuck around when I say Shoujo Jojo? No. You're more serious than I've ever seen you. I'm really going to need you to step up your game. I'll do this my... is Garth's World Party Time Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I only watched the German version. <laughs> <laughs> Sami, Sami. Nope, nope, not in Japanese. Was you, were you trying to do German? Yeah. Sami, 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 Sami. <laughs> I, I don't know. You do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've fallen into this trap before, haven't we? Yes. No. S Sammy. Yeah. I don't know why you make the Japanese movement. That's. I just interlocked my fingers. How is this a Japanese movement? I didn't. That's not what you did. I'm interlocking that's my fingers. That's not what you did. It is really offensive what you did. I don't know why you put that hat on. Uh, you, you had to be there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, a shoujo. Now, interesting. Uh, right off the bat, this. Uh, it's a Japanese term. It refers to like a kind of sea spirit with a red face and red hair. Um, and it's it like it sort of has like a fondness for alcohol. You could lure it or attract it with alcohol. But the like the kanji for it, like the characters for it in both Japanese and a Chinese language. I'm not sure which one. Um, it also means orangutan. <laughs> so there's actually like oh my God, Shoujo Rogan. <laughs> Jesus. So there's it's actually there's some shared physical characteristics between the description of a shoujo and an orangutan. Like the idea of having like reddish hair being kind of furry. Top so what to we're bottom. saying is someone maybe just saw an orangutan. <laughs> it's possible someone saw an orangutan drinking sake. 
Um, that sounds like a fucking fun night. Hell yeah. Um, so, but also the word shoujo is a supposedly a Japanese. Why was just the name of an orangutan? That I was would, like, what's it called? That would be so fucking funny. Oh, no, it's a shoujo. It's apparently a, a Japanese reading of the Chinese word jing jing, uh, or its older form sheng sheng, which translated as like live lively. So uh, it's it shares physical characteristics with an orangutan, but it's actually meant to be a kind of like like legendary primate, like not like Bigfoot, but like Bigfoot in that it's not a real thing. You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to be some sort of other thing. Um. So, um. Uh, hang on here. So yeah, the the shoujo is represented as a sea spirit with a red face and hair. It's fond of alcohol. That's part of like the sort of like folk tradition in Japan. Um, it it is generally like widely thought of as Japanese, but obviously it has sort of uh, uh, a history in Chinese folklore as well. Um, so the idea is that even though it looks kind of like a primate and stuff like that, because it's like a sea spirit, it's also like part fairy or part, you know, like a, like Sprite or something like that. Um, uh, in uh, no theater in like sort of medieval Japanese, like theater, um, it, it's definitely more of like a monkey, more of like a primate. Sure. Um, I looked up how to kill a shoujo because um, I put a knife in a banana. Well, here's the thing. I go to different spots for this. And the one place that I go sometimes is just it's just like a like a myth wiki. Sure. Um, but in the myth wiki, it was like, oh, you need a Japanese sword. Like, oh, and you could like bless it with a Shinto priest. So it's just stuff. taking from Super But I was Natural. like, well, I was like that like too... supernatural is never that specific yes so i was like that feels like they just watched supernatural and, and then added that. that to the to the wiki um because like when you listen it says when stabbed with this blade it kills the shoujo and the creature becomes visible for a few mo-. like nothing in the folklore oh. says that a shoujo is invisible and then dean is hot <laughs> yeah yeah and then dean comes um so at any rate i typed in how to kill a shoujo and uh, I, I've pulled up this article here. So, uh, like I said, they have like orange or red fur, an ape-like appearance. They wear seaweed skirts, and they love being uh, close to water. They're sea spirits. Um, they're fond of drinking sake. Um, they've been witnessed uh, haunting breweries, bars, and clubs anywhere that alcohol can be found because they're just they they like it. But it's not like they're. Um, they're not like exclusive to those places, but you might find them there because that's like a thing they they like. In the way that like what, what was the other episode where they say like fairies like sugar or sure, whatever the yeah, yeah, shit sweet was. things and yeah. 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 Um so, uh, uh before taking a sip of shojo liquor, you have to be careful of whether or not you're like a good person. So, um uh if you were, if who feels that confident? If you're good, righteous, moral, and upstanding, the drink of a shoujo will taste heavenly. It will get you properly drunk on flavorful tones. Hell yeah! And you'll like skip the hangover and all that stuff. If you're immoral or evil, the drink will taste sour. Um, and if your soul is tainted enough, it'll be poison. So some say shoujo poison will kill an evil person immediately. How Others say it will you, bind you to change your ways. How confident do you feel taking a sip of that? <laughs> <laughs> let's that's, just say my intentions are good yeah <laughs> the, yeah that's a question i don't need to answer <laughs> yeah um uh let's see uh da, 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 da. um yeah it's still nothing about how to kill them that's this bullshit. is a whole this whole thing I, I pulled up because i wanted to find out how to kill them and you can't so are they typic are they typically like harmful no, they're kind of just like they just like doing their own thing. They're just like a spirit. They're just a spirit. Uh, but brewers have said that they see them. And and again, there's this idea of like shoujo liquor, which is that if they're in your brewery and that, then like 
some essence of them is imbued into the alcohol you produce. I like the idea that it's like it becomes oh, like a kind of folklore. It's like, thing. Don't text her. Like it's just like helpful to drunk people. No, she, you know, I could call her because this fucking bullshit we should be together. Not is, worth it. No, nah, you're right, man. I fucking love you, Shojo. Shojo, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You Shojo, I Shojo. But yeah, I mean, like, uh, Shojo show up in, like, pop culture and myths and stuff like that, but it's, cl- like, clearly the episode is pervasive because they're like, oh, you definitely need a katana and a Shinto priest. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, there you go. All right. Well, with that knowledge, we will then get into today's episode. Let's do it. We begin with the then, which is just Garth. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I fucking love it. I was, like, expecting something else. Nope. Nope. It's perfect. It's just Garth. No notes. No notes. Just show us Garth. That's what we want. I mean. Yes. Absolutely. Love it. Listen. We're here for it. It's Garth's world. We're just living in it. Yeah. Party time. Excellent. <laughs> All right. We get into the then or the now. Oh, my God. Sometimes the then is the f- then of the The future. then is the now of the past. Holy shit. So it's a little wisdom nugget for you. Holy shit. You can use that if you want. Ah, fuck yeah, I will. Hell yeah. All right. We begin with Junction City, Kansas. Four teenagers are out in the woods camping, and one of them is telling a ghost story about Jenny Greentree. This is such a fucking trope, but have you ever in your life as a teenager got and told scary stories like camping? Preteen? Really? Yeah. Oh, God, I never did. You go <laughs> camping or something, but like, you don't, like, who gives a shit? Oh, no, a spooky story. I mean... Cub Scouts and send like adventurers and stuff. And yeah, we never told scary stories. We just went and like smoke weed. Yeah, just roasted marshmallows and shit. Hell yeah, that was it. Well, he shows them the initials that the woman carved into a tree uh, just before she died. Yeah, she was supposedly she like froze to death under that tree or whatever. Yes. Since then, her evil spirit haunts the woods. Yeah. A bottle breaks, and their drunk friend Trevor McCann comes out of the woods laughing. He's the brother of one of them. Yeah. And he's like, hey, guys, so just uh, drive over here, see what you're doing. They're like, you drove here? And he's like, no. Maybe, maybe you drove here. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his brother Ray complains, and Trevor invites him to call their father, Jim. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Let's go into the woods. However, <laughs> Trevor suddenly hears something that no one else can and then sees something come out of the woods. Yeah. He runs away, and they wonder what he's seen. And then they hear, like, scream, like, "Ah! Ah!" (laughs) Yes. Ray goes after him, and then finds him lying dead in the woods. He's, like, ripped apart. There's, like, feathers and shit. Was he wearing, like, a puffy vest or something? Maybe. Because I was, like... Is the is the are the feathers part of it? That's and not how guts it, work. And then well, but then it never comes up again. And I was like, he must have just been wearing like, like a something like that. But I like didn't I wasn't tracking it. And I was like, is this thing like a swan? Is it yeah, like no. a <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a pillow underneath his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was playing I'm camping, so I've my got my trusty pillow. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh Garth then pulls up to a diner, yeah. flashes his badge to yeah. two girls. Yeah, uh, they're like, w- he's like, hey, ladies, and they're like, what? Top and he's gun. Like, I need some goddamn respect. And then he yeah. flashes his badge, and they're like, oh, sorry, officer. Yeah, he's wearing uh, sunglasses. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's got so much fucking, like, BDE. He has so much BDE. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, God, I fucking love Garth so much. <laughs> Let's just say he's over 200 pounds. Is he? I mean, not, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, they call. I'm, I am too, but not in those proportions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I make up for it. Oh yeah, let yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a compliment. Isn't it's definitely not. Uh, yeah, they call him Top Gun, which is referencing the 1986 movie Top Gun, which is not Tom an Cruise. insult. They say it kind of like shittily. Yeah. I wish someone would call me Top Gun. Hey there, Top Gun. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, bro. Let's do this. Nice. That girl is poison. Yeah. 
Do that again. Try that again. Nope, not the rhythm of it. It's... I think we did the same thing. Garth. Uh... <laughs> I love when you like miss sing a song. That's one of my favorite things. Garth. Uh, they, they tell Garth about uh, Jenny Green Tree. So like, he let's let's find out where this bitch is buried yeah. <laughs> or whatever. He doesn't say that, but, but it's not far from. It's it. got like that energy. Hell yeah. yeah. He, he goes to the cemetery, digs up Jenny's grave, and salts and burns the bones. <laughs> I love this. He walks away slowly. He's like. He, he says like good night jenny or whatever like he's you yeah. know, tosses the lighter in or whatever bones go out he walks away slowly like so fucking jacket good. over the shoulder and then i was just like it made me just question for a second i was like the boys rebury the things yeah. when they're done he just like burned the bones it's just walking away like my work here's done yes he just leaves an open charred grave love it <laughs> just imagine there's like some sort of like the cops are trying to track this guy that like digs up and burns grave yes and they're like what is his purpose yeah yeah <laughs> we then see ray drinking in his car when chloe calls to tell him that he should be with his family. He cuts her off and goes into the woods looking for Trevor's killer. Yeah. And spots a woman in white dress. Ray runs uh, uh, runs after her but sees nothing. And then s- something grabs him, lifts him into the air, and rips him open. It's great. I love it. Great effect. The sound effect. Oof. Oh, yeah. Like some good, like... <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah. It's a good like leg twitch kind of. Yeah, shit. it was good. It's a great shot. It's a really solid, uh, solid death. Then Garth calls his girlfriend. Fuck yeah. Is he still with Becky at this point? No. Is that are we supposed to assume it's Becky? Becky, Becky. Yeah. No, I don't think they were. Didn't ever... they meet in oh. the last the last time we saw them? Like, Interesting. I don't know because that was with uh, the love potion. I thought he thing. went for it, and they were like, no. Yeah, I thought. Well, Dean they said like, no, no, but then I was like, are we supposed to? I don't think, think so. Think he's with Becky I mean, at this Because he's like saying like, yeah, I fit like he's talking about hunting. Yeah, yeah. So this person knows. Yeah, maybe. But I, yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, But he stops for food and hears a police report about Ray's death. <gasps> then we cut to Dean and Meg calls him and to let him know that Castiel's condition hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah. Once he hangs up, he asks if Sam is okay and Sam insists that he's fine. Garth then calls Dean, and after reminding him that he owes him one, he says that he has a problem. Yeah, yeah. So this episode is a small homage to Ringu from 1998. Oh, fuck yeah. Sam's- well, certainly the design of the shoujo is very- Oh, like, absolutely. Very, like, Samara-esque. Yeah. Sam says that he wishes his condition wasn't like the damn tape of the ring, from The Ring. Right. Um, funny enough, uh, where I pulled this fact from before I continue, uh, for whatever reason, they, they, they like starred out damn. Oh, but so it's, it, it just, it's the D blank, 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 blank tape. And I definitely was like the dick tape. Yeah. <laughs> and then I look this up curse of mine, the dick tape. Yeah. And then I had to look up the trans, uh, script, uh, the, the transcript of the episode. And I was like, Oh, that damn. I was like, <laughs> Really? I love you. So you say dick tape. I was like, why would you start out damn? Um, but Ringu remade in America as The Ring in 2002. Great movie. Japanese horror I mean, film. Ringu is great, but like, I actually think The Ring is I like so too. one of very few like better American remakes of a Japanese thing where you're like, that's fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in this horror film, you die in, uh, after seven days after watching a certain tape, unless you show a tape to someone else, thus passing on the curse. This is the line with what happened in the previous episode. Castiel has shown Sam's hell and absorbs it, saving Sam. The monster of this episode, the shoujo, is a Japanese spirit, and its appearance is strikingly similar to the monster of Ringu, with its black hair covering its pale face and the dirty and raggedy white dress. Okay, hang on. Hang on just a second. Yeah. This is just me misremembering, I guess. But I didn't think a thing with the ring was that you had to pass it on. I just thought it was, if you see it, seven days. And then if someone else sees it, they've got seven days from when they saw it. I I didn't think it was like an it follows scenario. I don't know. 
Great question. I didn't think that was the thing. Maybe it is. But I, I could just be misremembering because it's been a while since I watched it. God, it's been fucking decades since I've seen it, I'm sure. Fucking good. <laughs> scared the shit out of me, though. You? Listen, I'm a little scared boy. <laughs> uh, Sam and Dean then arrive at the morgue. The boys are driving an AMC Pacer, the same cart as driven by Garth in Wayne's World. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I didn't put that together. For perspective, the last AMC Pacer wagon was made in 1979. That means that they drove off in a 33-year-old car with no dust, ru- dust uh, no dents, rust, or damage. <laughs> Here's the thing. I know they're not using baby because they're supposed to be That'd blending be it, but they keep picking the most conspicuous cars. A car that hasn't been made in 30 years. Uh, yes. You know, a car that might as well be the Impala, but is technically not. You yes. know, like, they're, they're not, like, driving around like a Chrysler Neon. Yeah, you know what I Dodge mean? Like, Caravan. <laughs> they got they to pick some more nondescript vehicles. I know. <laughs> you know. Uh, they discover that Garth is posing as... They should race... drive a PT Cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> they discover that Garth is posing as Ray's cousin to see the body. Uh, once the coroner leaves, Garth explains that the two kid, two dead kids are brothers. Dean picks up EMF readings while Garth explains that the killer seems more like a monster than a ghost. Well, yeah, and Garth says, like, I already scanned for EMF. There was nothing. And then Dean's thing's going off. He goes, okay, that's interesting. Weird, but I guess my thing is broken again. Yeah. Uh, Sam does some checking and confirms that the brother's father owns a marker brewery. Yeah. They keep calling it, like, a douchey. I was trying to think of like what they were con- thinking of it being. I like Sam Adams, maybe. Like, yeah, I because I, I, yeah, I I can't really tell what they think. I think Sam Adams is still too big, but like maybe something like that. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if the American fucking microbrewery. But I also think it's so funny big. because like they're referring to it as douchey, but I think they just mean like the annoying hipster thing. Yeah, because yeah. like Dean will just drink like. A Coors or some yeah, shit, yeah, or yeah, a yeah. Bud, which I think is probably more douchey. I guess that you know, like what I mean. Yeah, what's a douchey like? I think beer, I think we're yeah. misusing the word douche. In this I think episode. you might be correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless these beers are really good at vaginal cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. Just rule of thumb for anyone out there listening. It's alcohol. Beer is not good for that. <laughs> it's alcohol. It's It's actually probably the worst thing for it. You might Be- get a yeast infection. Well, I was just going to say, it's full of the one thing you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> but man, do you go good going down. You sort of get what you get at that point. You don't get upset. Yeah. Hops in. <laughs> or I'm hopping out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the trio then goes to the factory and convinces the manager, Jim's daughter, Marie, to let them in. She explains that her father, Jim, and his partner, Randy Baxter, run the the place since their third partner, Dale, died. Yeah. The brewery's slogan... Uh, uh, the brewery's slogan... Slogo Jojo! <laughs> the brewery's slogan... <laughs> if you don't notice, if you look on the thing, it says, it's party on. Oh, that's which is cute. That's cute, yeah. Uh, in one shot of the brewery at night, you can read Avalon Brewing Company on one of the tanks behind the janitor cleaning the window. Avalon Brewing Company was located in Vancouver, BC, where Supernatural is shot, but is now closed. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They watch as Randy irritably demotes the janitor to the graveyard shift, even though Marie admits that Randy is the yeah. company axe man and usually fires people. Well... N- yeah, and she's like, he's a nice she's guy. Kind of try to apologize for him. Yeah, like, well, you know, things are tough right now, you know, with the deaths and all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam and Garth talk to Jim, who's clearly upset. Meanwhile, Dean talks to Marie, who says that Jim feels responsible for Dale's death, and Dale's wife is suing them. Randy explains that. I mean, he, listen, you gotta, you gotta, th- you gotta throw it out there that if. He, this guy is their father or their grandfather. I can't remember of the people that are dead. A good question. But anyway, father re- re- related. But you know what I mean. Like if you run a brewery and you have one son who clearly has a drinking problem and drinks and drives, yeah. and then another son who, when faced with grief, immediately turns to drinking. Yeah, it's a level of culpability. <laughs> Fair, especially when you don't know. That fucking ghosts exist. Fair. Be like, it's 
his fault. It's a little fault. my fault, it's yeah. It's a decent amount his fault. Yeah. Fair. Randy explains <laughs> that he loved Ray and Trevor and doesn't think that they would do yeah. anything crazy. I love them like the smooth taste of a... <laughs> Of a lager. Hell yeah. Or a stout even. Yeah. I wish they were more stout. I wish they hopped over those curbs. But now we'll lay their pale ales to rest. (laughs) (laughs) This is the eulogy. Yeah. (laughs) Let's just say the information went down a little sour. Yeah. (laughs) We've put a... We've put a bell inside the coffin just in case there's a they're a rattler. <laughs> My memory's a little hazy. IPA. <laughs> I can't wait for this wake session to be over. <laughs> Saison. <laughs> yeah, Saison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he mentions that Dale killed himself several months I ago. I expecting him to just triple hop their way into the room. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? I'm sure I'll interrupt with them. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't talk to me while I have my coffee porter. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's pretty good. I mean, fucking the Mill Street one was always great. Hell yeah. yeah Hell yeah. yeah. Real good. Uh and they are planning to sell the company to a major chain. Later, Sell out spoo. Sure. Later, Jim arrives home and his daughter Lillian greets him. Jim's granddaughter, Tess, inadvertently drinks a screwdriver <laughs> that, uh, that her mother made. Yeah, I, this giggling. whole fucking family. It's definitely this like grandfather's fault. I do love the kid where the like this like six year five year old or something like drinks the alcohol and goes, uh oh. <laughs> she she goes, uh oh, looks at her mom and then kind of like she gives a look like Another night like this. Yeah. Huh? Like, it's not just the grief. Like, oh, yeah, mom always fucking ties one on. But, like, immediately she knew. Like, yeah. that's how so often like, mom's No, does. that's mom's drink. Yeah. And also the most drinking fucking screwdrivers. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> mom and dad will be home soon. Yeah. <laughs> Quick. Uh, you pour three quarters of a cup. Of of Smirnoff and just a little bit of Sunny D to make it an excuse. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to try the purple stuff. No, <laughs> we used to use Sunny D for screwdrivers. Really? Because it was cheap. Orange juice was like more money. Primo, you know. Oh, so nice. we get Sunny D. So our screwdrivers were especially bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! Hell yeah! Uh, the little girl sees something behind move behind Jim and goes to look at it. She sees a Japanese woman yeah. in a white dress standing behind Lillian and points at it. But Jim doesn't see it. I anything. really need like kids and people that see ghosts to like use their fucking words. Cause they like the grandpa even is like, what are you looking at? She takes like ten fucking seconds to slow point. And then the shoujo fucking like rips her mom's spine out. She's like, oh. When she could have like at any point in time been like, Mom, turn around. I know you'll see this. You're about to get screwdriver. <laughs> yeah. But to drive that screw right through your spine. It's true. Uh, the creature then reaches through Lillian's chest, killing her. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because, like, we cut away and the grandpa, like, turns the kid away. Like, oh, yeah, my God, yeah, like, yeah. don't look at this. But think of his perspective on that. Yes. He's the only one not drunk, I think. Yes. Although, wasn't he drinking in the car before he came in? Yeah, but that's just, like, to keep him straight. But then shouldn't he see it? Oh. Because I feel like he doesn't see it. Maybe he just doesn't get drunk. You have to be drunk. But the kid had one sip. Yeah, but it's a little... Kids can have a sip. Yeah. Kids can have a sip. I do like that the way that they're like, this is how a kid would be drunk as a little girl, just like, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> and, and it's like instant. Yes. Very funny. Yeah. Pussy. <laughs> That's some fucking fast acting alcohol. Yeah. Uh, the Winchesters then go back to the motel where Garth is staying. Yeah. And try to work out what creature has claws and is invisible. And they're like, is it a invisible werewolf? <laughs> well, I mean, it's. I do like when they're like, well, all the usual things don't make sense. We combine them, I guess. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a thing. And they're like, you're proposing invisible werewolf. He's like, I don't fucking know. I called you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I do kind of like that. Sam confirms that Dale was a famous brewmaster as well as a partner. 
And Dean decides to try a bottle of a thigh strapper, a thigh slapper. Thigh strapper. Ooh. <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> try our peg ale. <laughs> And hands a bottle to are others. into you, pale yeah. ale. <laughs> I do like the idea that, like Dean is just like, there's no way beer could be better than Bush. Yeah, light. like well, listen, there's people like that out there. Lakeport, my K doesn't get any better. <laughs> Maker a Laker, it's a buck of beer. Um, yeah, my dear sister, who I love deeply. Oh yeah, she's got trash taste in beer. She's I got about absolute that. fucking garbage taste in beer. But she came up here. We live in a, like a small town with like six fucking breweries. Like, like two, there, but yes, there's there's more than two. There's not. There is three, four. Do you want me to start naming them? No, no, no. It's four. Plus Deep Dark Woods, which I no, know you're not thinking of. What? They stopped? Yeah. When was the last know. time you saw them? Well, I don't know. There's still there's Solstice though. Cider. Is that a beer? Well, it's still brewing. Sure. I said breweries. So at any rate, there's like five or six like breweries yeah, in town. Six. It's five or six. <laughs> I'm sure it's six. <laughs> anyway, there's lots of like interesting, you know, goods to find to yeah, yeah. whatever beers in town. And we try all these different things, and we like take her around we do some tours and stuff she just wants to and then coot. at the end she had a chill coot and she was yeah. like this is amazing and chill coot is like our version of like pbr it's like having pbr yeah or like some shit like that it's, they they do it because they're like well the white trash people will want and it. she was like this is the best she like bought some put it in her bag oh like my God. i was like that's what you're taking this from is upsetting here, right I, yeah my, look sh- can't all be as cool as your mom Okay. That's all. <sighs> Your talented mom. Easy. She's got real talent. That's some top notch talent right there. <laughs> You're saying talent with the stank that uh like Tyrese says the word potential in Too Fast, Too Furious. You're That's like, some oh, cool. some potential. There's some grade A talent right there. I will kill you. <laughs> Sorry, would you rather talk about your big dick dad? No, I wouldn't. Well, then I'd, I'd make rather... a choice. <laughs> it's not one or the other. We got to talk about one of them. Yeah, dude. I'm going to hit on a parent. I don't like this. Because kidding on your sister is too real. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, frankly, it's all real. I don't love it. You're saying, I, you're saying there's a chance then? <laughs> no. That's not Hell yeah. Me. Absolutely. I not said me. that because I didn't think there was a chance, but it sounds like there's a chance. You were home recently. Was there a vibe? <laughs> Did anybody ask about me? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Sam, uh, yeah, Sam confirms that Dale was the famous brewmaster. Dean has the beer. He has like, to admit that the beer is good. Uh, I do like the idea that they're like, he's a brewmaster, and Dean looks at him like, like he's never heard the term brewmaster. Yeah, but doesn't a machine make this? Yeah. So funny. Yeah. Like, that sounds gay. Like, that's the look. That, it, yeah. In an earlier season, he may even have said it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has to admit, though, that the beer is good and watches as Garth chugs the entire bottle in a matter of seconds. Hell yeah. Like, the man can fucking take it. Listen, Garth is is the most alpha of any a thousand of them. percent. Uh, once- Dean and Sam are plagued with insecurities. <laughs> yes. Garth couldn't be more confident. Garth is the, again, BDE. But also self-aware. I don't think that's true. No? No, because I think, no, if he was more self-aware, he'd be less confident. Sure. Once he's gone, Garth admits that he doesn't usually drink beer, particularly when he skinny dips. (laughs) This is what I mean. You you don't look like you don't look like a little tiny guy like that at skinny dip unless you're fucking hanging dong. A thousand percent. He's got like a, he's got like a weird Willem Dafoe yes. dick or something. A thousand like, percent. Yeah. <laughs> when Garth gets drunk on one beer, Dean calls him Tara Reed. So a little bit of context here. So did Jensen and Tara Reed work together? So in the nineteen nineties, Reed had a promising future as an actress, but that sort of fizzled out. She became known as a heavy drinking party girl. In two thousand five, she hosted a reality show pretty much centered on her drinking her way around the world. In 2009, she went to rehab after giving a few too many drunken interviews. Listen, and, you know, that's a rough spiral. And Probably she, not a cool thing to make a joke about. And she went but... to rehab, and that's 
great. Don't love that they made that joke. But I also think it's overstating it to say that that got in the way of her acting career. I think her, her acting, acting got, got in the way, way of her, her acting, acting career. career. <laughs> yes. Let's, you know, call a spade a spade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a voice that was kind of cool to listen to. That was it. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of it. Yeah. Sam discovers that Dale left the company two weeks before he died and figures that someone pushed him out because he didn't want to sell. Yeah. They figured that his ghost may be responsible. They hear a police report about Lillian's death, and Sam and Dean go to investigate. Uh, yeah. At the McCann house, Garth convinces Jim and Marie to let him talk to Tess alone. Thanks to his use of the sock puppet, Mr. Fizzles. I, you know what? I, this, I kind of love this about Garth. Garth, you know, he's got all that BDE, but he's also just, he's a sweet boy. And the boys would never fucking do something like this, no. and it, but it 100% works. He does, like, the therapy puppet thing and the girl. Because you, you know, if you've got a giant dog, you don't need to compensate in any other way. Yeah, and it definitely shouldn't come up in this scene. No. <laughs> what do you think was in that song? <laughs> It's moving though. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets her to open up and admits that she saw the monster after she drank a grown up drink. Yeah. Yeah. One of mummy's several. Yes. Has your daughter ever accidentally drank a, like an alcoholic drink or like no, stolen a no, sip no, or anything no, no, like no. that? She's sometimes she'll be like, Can I try wine? And we'll be like, No, you have to be you have to be grown up. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no, nothing nothing like that. I mean, I that would be horrible. Have you gotten her to like get you drinks though? Now, have you gotten to that level? No, 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 no. Like the the Titus, yeah, 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 fucking yeah. thing. No, haven't done that. But I also like my parents. My parents don't drink, so I don't even really have a memory of a like. Let them try. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know my how like a lot. Of, you know how like either. a lot of people have that. Yeah, yeah, kind I of never... story where it's like I was nine and my aunt let me take a sip of the, like or whatever. Like I don't. I have no memory like that. Have you seen that TikTok video of the dad like on his phone and the kids like inside one of those little like uh, rolly chair things? Sure. And th the dad's like in the morning and it's like he's like on his phone as a coffee's in front of him and the kid like rolls across the room up to the coffee, grabs the coffee, takes a sip of the coffee, and then starts pouring it on the ground. And the dad looks over and is like, oh! what are you doing Jesus as the Christ. kid like slowly walked over grabbed the cup walked away that's why you gotta spend less time on your phones people yeah absolutely my uh my girlfriend's nephews they're like th four yeah, and they, they drink like, all the time yeah it's awesome they're fine <laughs> they're fucking cool as yeah, shit they, they fucking rule yeah they crush the beers off my head yeah they wait outside the liquor store and ask me to go in and get stuff yeah. for them no i wait out there for them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They give me the coolers I like. I don't want to. Yeah, look hell them. yeah, yeah. Um, but they always like come and the, their their whole thing is they're really excited because they can like get stuff out of the fridge now. Sure. And so they're always like, "Do you want a drink?" And so they'll like go and like bring everybody beers all of the time, right? Which is is fucking awesome. Yeah. No, my my kid only really does that when she's like setting the table for pancakes or sure. something. She'll go get the syrup. Then she goes get the beer. <laughs> yeah. Then she goes gets the beer. <laughs> Your daddy it's Saturday his, morning. You know what I need. Your daddy needs his breakfast beer. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tess apologizes, admitting that it was an accident and begs the sock puppet not to turn her into the police. I mean, truly, she took one drink of an alcoholic drink and a ghost killed her mom. Yeah. It was like that. That's going to fuck you up. That's forever. a fucking scared straight. Yeah, truly. <laughs> there ever was one. You know? <laughs> Sam talks to Dale's widow who says that she's suing because they sold the company out from under her husband. However, she explains that Dale said he was going to send them a bottle of sake that he bought uh, uh, on one of his trips as a gift, but insisted that his wife stay away from it. Yeah. As they drive back, Garth and Dean realize that the creature can only be seen when the viewer is drunk. So Dean starts drinking from Bobby's flask, and Garth asks about it. Yeah, yeah, Garth is like, hey, um, you know, the EMF keeps going off, like, mirror yeah. that thing, and I Listen, I'm just speaking for the audience here, Dean, but, uh... We've all think, seen his ghost. Do you and... think maybe Bobby's uh, Hans and you guys? And Truly. He's like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm fine. Not this episode. Everything's fine. Yeah, this isn't an A and B plot episode. Dean has, like, a total, like, Tim Robinson reaction to it. Yes. Like, 
I didn't do nothing. Yeah. I didn't break shit. <laughs> I didn't fucking do this. I fucking love that so much. <laughs> Do you ever see the one from the the clip from Detroiters where they where he's getting the drinks at the wedding <laughs> yeah. and he's like I get the the Boston coolers yeah. uh, put alcohol in those yeah yeah yeah, yeah let's uh, get three more Boston coolers uh, no booze do you know what put booze in those <laughs> so yeah. get us a tray what are you doing this is insane what are we supposed to do with this so good uh, they meet Sam at the brewery and the brothers break in while Garth stands watch outside yeah they find the sake bottle and discover that it's almost empty. Do you like sake? Are you a sake it's guy? It's not my favorite. Uh, I've I've had it, and generally, you know, it's better warm. Like it's better to have like kind of hot is fucking sake. Rules. Have you ever but had sake bombs though? I don't. I don't really like sake that much. Uh, I, I I have it sometimes, like when the mood strikes me. Like if we're out for sushi and we're doing the thing, like I'll I'll get sake or something like that. But I, I've never ever had it outside that context. I fucking it's love not like a fave a sake bomb with an a- asahi like beer. Fucking so good. An acai beer. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Why? Just drink a beer. No, it's as- asahi. Oh, it's sorry. a Japanese. Oh, sorry. Beer. I thought you were trying to say acai. acai. No, 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 like asahi. <laughs> it's a Japanese beer. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, no. It's sorry, just like a Japanese lager. Trying... No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's a superfood read. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do this. I it was. It's. I say a kai bear. No, uh, no, no. It's asahi. Yeah, no. It's a great Japanese beer. Anyways, but yeah, with the hot fucking sake and the cold beer, fucking crush those all day. Yeah, I, I I can't really. I, I can I can have I can have one, and then I pr- prefer to drink something else. Generally, some plans for Toronto, I guess. Um, Dean, <laughs> sorry that you were planning a sake night. Yeah, maybe a little too specific. You could sake dick. <laughs> God damn it! Also, would you be surprised if I planned that night? No, for I us? wouldn't be surprised at all. But it's way too specific. Just plan like we're gonna go out. To a bar. Yeah. Not that's... what we're going to drink all night. Yeah, because that's, that's too... not something that I would do. I know, but I'm saying you don't have... Just, just live, Tell man. me you didn't have a wonderful time in Vancouver. Did you plan that? So Dean spots a security <laughs> camera, and Sam hacks into a security system. And checks the time of death starting with Trevor. <laughs> yes. Uh, they see him enter the office, but nothing else and Dean starts to pour drinks. Yeah, he's like, we got we got to get hammed if we're gonna see this thing. Love this. I like that it also like works through the technology. Yeah, yeah. Like there's some sort of like technological imprint that's still like it's still the filter. Normally, yeah. like some in some other cases, like just technology is enough to yeah. see this thing. I like that there's this like extra layer. It's kind of fun. How many fucking like fanfics do you think started with this episode? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Looks like we're gonna have to have a few more drinks. Yeah, dude. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dean shuffled a little closer to Sam, trying to get, you know, a look at the security yeah. footage. His arm grazed, his- <laughs> spread his Japanese. <laughs> Jeez, come on! What the fuck? Get on your Japanese. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? I got something you can suck in. <laughs> what the this? Is? No. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Dong. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm also picturing you writing this fan fiction. Hell yeah. Do, 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 You get it, right? Right. Once read, they, this, <laughs> read this the most offensive way you can. That's how I intended it. Yeah. yeah. Once they are drunk, they check the security footage and see the creature. Yeah. Randy comes in and starts to call the cops. <laughs> yeah. And then f- fucking... Like, what the uh, fuck are you guys doing? I knew you weren't the FBI. And then fucking Garth tases him right away. Immediately. But also, why couldn't he do that outside? What do you mean? Like, why would Garth let him get Maybe all the way in? Maybe he didn't see him. Well, then he's a bad lookout. Well... He's not great. (laughs) Come on, Garth. Sam and Dean take the box holding the bottle of Japanese, uh, of Japanese, uh, (laughs) bottle of sake, the bottle of sake to the Japanese chef. Yes. To a Japanese. (laughs) Yeah. No, the, (laughs) The you were right. It's the only one (laughs) who translates and explains. It just so happens to be in this town. Yes. The only Japanese chef. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
It's Morimoto from Iron Chef. Fuck. If there was going to be the, it'd be him. Oh, yeah. If there was going to be an episode of Supernatural with Morimoto in it, it would be this. No, one. I mean, no, I meant if there was going to be a oh, Japanese yes. chef. Yeah, obviously. Definitely, yeah. Who translates and explains that the writing says that it contains a shoujo, an alcohol spirit that is not known for being friendly. I Here's what I really like about this. This guy, this chef, like, he's like, I don't believe in this stuff, but I also have, like, never actually seen, like, something that kind of looks like it could do Like it, it could have yes. held one of I'm like, and you can see him kind of go like, this is, um... Like, I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Listen, when you go to Japanese chef school, they tell you about this stuff, but you I never think you're going to see never it. Never think you're going to see it. Especially as the one Japanese chef. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds? Yeah. <laughs> Me, the one Japanese chef, this... you here in this town with this box? It's almost unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of like pay It's off. almost supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> Look straight down the barrel. <laughs> they pay him like for his time or whatever. And yeah. He gets back to work. The brothers go back to the motel and find Garth practicing his martial arts. Which is very funny. He explains that he dumped Randy in the hot tub. And they explain about the shoujo. Yeah, he's in like the bathtub, like the jacuzzi yeah. in the hotel room. Yeah. Sam looks it up and discovers that if someone is drunk enough, people can see it. Yeah. Someone can harness it with a spirit box and send it on missions of revenge. And they figure that Dale sent it to get the revenge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Since they took his baby, he's taking their baby. Yeah, they like because they they go like, but why is it killing all these like peripheral people and not? Yeah, the guys, the themselves. guy, uh, Randy or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. Yeah. and they they yeah they come to this conclusion that like the wife had said that the brewery was Dale's baby, so he would sit, like maybe take that like that's revenge. He would take yeah. that from from yeah. Randy. The only way to I'll kill take it. them from Randy before just their general alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could have just waited. Yeah, would have been a couple of years. It would have happened anyway. The only Randy's way Randy's influence on this family is undeniable. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to kill it is with the katana with a Shinto blessing. Yeah, not sure why it has to be a katana. Like it se- seems to me that sure. I mean. I know it's supernatural. It's nice to have a specific weapon. I don't have a problem with that. But it seems to me that the power is the blessing. Yes. <laughs> not the, like, Some might think. Yeah. Like you might say it has to be like a pure metal or something sure, like that. But yeah. it's like, how does it like, what if it wasn't a, what if it was just like, you know, like the shorter blade yeah. or whatever? You're like, not this time. Nope. That's not a katana, you idiot. Yeah. You only, you can only get katana from the katana region of Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise <laughs> it's sparkling blades. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a Hattori Hanzo blade. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Maria, Marie's the last target, so Dean sends Sam to watch her while Dean hits the pawn shop. Yeah. Garth you set- can always count on a pawn shop to have a f- fucking sword. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Garth sets off his EMF meter, and it picks up readings from the flask. Dean objects, but Sam admits that he tried to contact Bobby Spirit already. He didn't tell Dean because he didn't want it to drag him in. He yeah. admits that he didn't contact anything. Yeah. Randy starts to wake up. And Garth handcuffs him to the hot tub while the Winchesters leave. Yeah. Garth points out to Randy that he doesn't have any kids and figures uh, that he's hiding something. The hunter points out that he's cutting the janitor a lot of breaks and has confirmed that his mother was Randy's receptionist. And he figures they were having an affair. Yeah. Garth warns Randy that the shoujo will come after his illegitimate son. And Randy admits that the receptionist made him swear not to tell him. I love how fucking capable Garth is. A thousand percent. But both incapable as well in some ways. Yeah. It's it's different than your usual, like, incompetent but well-intentioned thing. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. Inspector Gadget or something. Like, he's like on it and he's good at what he does but he also just has these weird quirks that make him like hard to work with yes yeah uh garth grabs a bunch of mini bottles tosses randy the keys and tells him not to call the cops yeah the janitor lee is working at the factory on the graveyard graveyard shift yeah it's funny that he i don't know my dad but i'm sure it's fine it's funny that he always wears uh, the like southern flag, the janitor Lee. 
<laughs> I, that's a stretch, man. <laughs> it's enough that you got it, though. I did, but... Sorry, one more time, the song. I feel like we said the same thing. We absolutely did not. I think I was right. Hashtag... Or... <laughs> Hashtag do, 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 do. let us know which one was right. <laughs> yeah, write the right one. Yeah, phonetically. We'll know. <laughs> or hashtag do 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 dog. Because <laughs> you're fucking sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's under unaware that the shojo is watching him. So this is actually the second appearance of this actor. Oh, okay. What other uh, episode was he in? Uh, he first appeared in season two, episode Hollywood Babylon, as one of the actors in the production of uh, Hellhazers 2, The Reckoning. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I like that. Dean finds a sword and takes it to the Japanese cook once again to bless it. I love this guy. He's like, I got a job, man. Yeah. He's, like, You're the, he's like, this is also kind of racist. Yeah. He goes, please read this blessing while I pour spring water on this plate. It a thousand percent is racist, it's but also a, like, what else is he going to go? Yeah. He'd be like, so I'm just your token Japanese. I'm like, just the token Japanese No, you're chef. just the Japanese chef. Yeah. Not token, only. Only. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He stumbles through a Shinto blessing while Dean blesses it with a bottle of water. As he finishes up, he calls him to as he goes into the brewery drinking heavily. Yeah. Sam follows Mer- Mary to a bar wh- where she's drinking. He drinks him, uh, himself and watches her from the bar. Garth finds Lee and sees sh- the shoujo approaching. And Dean tell, uh, and, uh, tells Dean that it's there. He grabs the janitor and hauls him out. Yeah. With the with uh when Garth spots the shojo in the brewery, he tells uh Lee, come with me if, if you want to live. Yeah, which is cute. Garth is quoting Terminator nineteen eighty four and Terminator two Judgment Day, nineteen ninety one. Meanwhile, Dean calls Sam and tells him that the shojo is at the brewery. Drunken Sam gets a taxi, but discovers that the driver prefers to drive slowly. Yeah, I mean, that's a good little bit, actually. That's kind it's of It's a fun. thing you never really see in anything. But it's also fun that Sam is like, I've been drinking, got to be responsible or whatever. But then he's just like stuck in traffic. <laughs> like, I also do like that maybe Sam would have driven, though, because Dean's like, are you drunk? And he's like, no. He's like, are you okay to drive? And he's like, no. no. You fucking buzzkill. <laughs> I mean, they do kind of. Yeah, I mean, Sam less than Dean. Dean seems like he drives drunk a lot. Yeah. (laughs) As they run, Garth tries to explain to the janitor that Randy is his father. And Shoujo catches up. The Shoujo catches up with them and throws Garth into a shelf. Yeah. Uh, Lee tries to get out, but the Shoujo seals the door and drags its claws along the wall. Yeah, it's a good, good, good effect. That's fun. Totally. Sam arrives and tries to get the janitor to the door, but the shoujo closes it as well and t- and tosses Sam aside. Yeah. Dean comes in and sw- uh, uh, and swings at the shoujo, but knocks him away. I do like like Sam being like, store. swing right, my right. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, Dean's not drunk enough for this. And Sam has to like tell him where to so aim. So funny. It's really funny. Uh, but he gets knocked aside and Sam uh, and Dean loses the sword. Dean stares at it. Something slides across the floor to him. It's very like uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. It, l- it looks like the Force. Yeah. Like, it just comes right back to his hand. Yeah. Dean has sobered up, but Sam tells him where to swing, and he finally hits and kills it. While the janitor goes to get Garth, Dean stares at the sword and then asks Bobby if he's there, but nothing happens. Yeah. As the shoujo is dying, it makes the same sound as the predator, who also uses invisibility to hunt its prey. Oh, that's fun, too. Yeah. The next day, the three hunters are ready to hit the road. Garth insists on hugging Dean and Sam and says they can call him anytime. Once he leaves, Sam wants to talk about Bobby, but Dean insists that what happened at the brewery was just his imagination. However, he finally gives in and describes all the things that has been happening to him. Sam thinks that they are imagining things because he's sure that the talking board and the EMF readings would have confirmed he was there. And he's like, Bobby, if Bobby was around, he'd let us know. Yeah. And Sam goes like, don't you think everyone that loses someone sees them everywhere? Like, maybe this is the first time we're normal. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, nope. <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting point that he makes. And you go like, oh, yeah. Dean's like, oh, yeah. And they uh, they walk out to the car. And as the camera like pans, Bobby's just fucking standing there. And Dean he says, uh, balls. Well, Dean runs back sees in. Him. Yeah. We, it looks like he sees him, but he just grabs the flask. Yeah. And then, yeah. Bobby, Bobby calls him an idiot. Yeah. Bobby gives him balls. And that's, and then he kind of psh, psh, out. And that's the end of the episode. There you go. What did you think? This is a fun one. Yeah. This is a really fun one. Did you episode. remember this one? I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did remember this one. one. Uh, a, because I remembered, I remembered the Japanese chef. I remembered like that. I, remembered, I do remember you thinking this episode was like much earlier. I rem- yes, I I definitely thought this was earlier. There was some other Japanese monster in like season two or three, yeah. and I thought that was going to be yeah, the show yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I remember I, you bringing it up. I remember this. I remember the alcohol monster. Yeah, I fucking love Garth in this episode. He's so good. I will say the thing that I have been consistently wrong about this season is how long this Bobby thing takes. In, yeah, I thought it was way less. In my rec- yeah. in like my recollection, he dies. We get like two or three episodes of like Ghost Bobby, like right after that. Like you like we follow Bobby. Sure. Like is kind of how I remember that. It's like so not how it plays out. Um so that's kind of interesting. I, I like that it's like there's finally a confirmation kind of thing. Like I mean, like the show's not subtle about it. We know what's happening. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I do kind of like that we finally see him. Um yeah. Cool monster, good action, some good kills. I fucking love that death at the beginning. The any, anything Garth is great. Him fucking walking away from that burning grave is so fucking funny. Yeah, hell yeah, he's amazing. Um, this is a really strong episode. There's not a lot not to like. There's some good like character stuff, but it's not just like needless brother fighting. No, like this is actually like a pretty solid episode. I'd probably give this. Let's see. What? Hang on. What are we? Because it's also for this season. Do you know what? For this season, I'm fucking doing it. Holy shit. You won't dare. I'm giving it five spring water katanas. Holy shit. Baby. This is a great episode. I love this one. Yeah. I got no notes. It's one of the best episodes in the season, I yeah. think, for sure. With an episode with a season that's lacking for sure. This episode is fun. It feels like a classic supernatural episode. Like this could be in first season. I think that's totally. why it's easy to think that it's from a previous season. Yeah, also true. Because yeah. it feels like such a classic episode. It does. Um, yeah. There's no angel talk. There's no And there's no weird like, well, halfway through the episode we decided to do a different episode. No, like, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah. One concept. It's really it's strong. Clean. Like it's uh it's a fun idea. I love the like you have to be drunk to uh That's a great it. hook. That's so much fun. Cause I like that like that like necessarily makes them worse at hunting. Yes. Like that's fun to me. It's such a good hook, I think. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed like Garth is always great. Yeah. Clearly an actor that was probably not supposed to come back, but like how could you not, right? Yeah, 100%. I think that's the thing. It's like he was probably a fan favorite at the time, and so they definitely brought him back because of that. And, and he's just like, yeah, he's he's rad. I I, I love Garth and um the the actors who play the like old dudes in this, the brewery owners and stuff, they were good. Like Yeah, I mean like all good like solid secondary character performances and stuff too. Yeah. Surprisingly, not very involved. No, they're not. But I think that's maybe also the strength. So we're, we just get this trio. Yeah. Like of, of there's Sandy no, and like, Garth. There's no other cops in this episode, which is rare. Yeah, it's true. That's not something you usually get. Um, but So yeah, I think I'm going to give this... Fuck. Yeah, I'm going to give it five sake bombs out of five. Hell yeah, baby. Love that. Uh, well, those were our reviews. But before we go, we've got a note from a fellow hunter. All right. Uh, with the subject, the subject is too late to the bag hag party. Oh, hell yeah. Hey guys, I've been listening to this podcast throughout the course of the last year, slowly catching up. I work in a furniture shop and am lucky that I can have my headphones in for most of the day, listening to whatever I want for about eight hours a day. That's a great gig. Hell yeah. I'm currently listening to season six. While I feel like I have a lot to say about this show and podcast, I want to chime in on bagged milk specifically. Yes. (laughs) 
it's a it's a thing I do love a, a, about this this podcast is that like people are coming to, like unite. People are all over the fucking spectrum. Oh yeah, of where they're on this show currently. Love some bagged milk. So I grew up in Massachusetts, and while we had the classic milk cartons in the cafeteria at school. And bought gallons of milk in the plastic uh, uh, jugs uh, at the grocery store. My first job. I at believe 17... he means the plastic boobs. <laughs> the chicken jugs. Jugs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my first job at seventeen. It was the only time I have ever seen bagged milk. I was uh, a waitress when I was working as a waitress in, in a, a bagged milk bar. bar. When I had boobs. When I bagged milk. Uh, (laughs) When I was a senior in high school at a local diner that was an old school train car diner. (laughs) Love those. Okay. I'm wondering where these details come into play. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) We had a big refrigerated meta milk dispenser on the counter that we would have to put these giant bags of milk into, making it really quick and easy to fill up uh, cups of milk or chocolate milk oh, during sure. the busy breakfast shift. I so like enormous, like industrial yeah. bagged milk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to say it was even a bag in a box style, so it was easier to maneuver up into the machine. Yeah. Anyways, like mommy's wine. <laughs> It's a bag in a box, baby. <laughs> Some may even say boob milk is m- mommy's wine. <laughs> Anyways, in all of my subsequent food service jobs over the next 10 years plus and all my travels, I have never seen bagged milk since. I actually forgot about it until you guys started talking about it. <laughs> oh, man. Move to southern Ontario, man. Baby. Love the lore segment, but I am hoping the sandwich segment doesn't make a comeback. Sorry, Reed, I can't do it. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? She she just fucking cut you like you do with the little tip of the milk bags. Death by a thousand milks. Yeah, she fucking slit your throat like that bag. <laughs> what the fuck? All the best. You know what? I'm going to bring back the sandwich segment even harder now. Oh, my God. You're going to sandwich so hard? I'm going to segment so hard that we sandwich. Yeah. Becky. P.S. My friend Spencer and I talk about this podcast a lot. He has written to you guys a couple of times. We know Spencer. And had his emails read on the show. I turned him and his wife, Rachel. Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> Finish the sentence first. My best friend from high school. Mm, intriguing. Go on. On to... Bagged milk. Supernatural. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A few years ago, and now onto the podcast. So thank you for giving us more stuff to geek out about in oh. between lovemaking sessions. No, no, she didn't say that. That's awesome. That's yeah. nice. Other than the weird fucking dig at me. For Thanks, no Becky, with the good taste. <laughs> Thanks, Becky, with like the fine idea, but not. <laughs> it's so specific. <laughs> but not of the mine. I love that talk. <laughs> what the fuck, Becky? <laughs> Becky, I couldn't love you more. I thought we had something. Did you? I thought we had something special, Becky. I love you, Becky. You've hurt me, Becky. You couldn't have made me prouder. You've hurt me. You've cut me deep, Becky. You're a good girl, You've Becky. You've pierced me like when you put your hand on the bag of milk and you put the straw <laughs> in. That weird thing that you did, A I thing guess. that everyone can yeah. relate to everywhere. <laughs> I just remembered like when you couldn't find the thing to cut the, or the scissors to cut the tip off to so use your teeth. I think it's important for people at home to understand that we're talking about many different kinds of bagged milk. Yeah. Becky described industrial bagged milk. Yeah. You're talking about buying just bagged milk at the grocery store. That you put inside the little like, plastic jug. That you put jug. in a little holder thing and you cut a little triangle off, yeah. which was its own fucking science. Yeah, and then you're talking about the weird And I'm talking one. about the little weird individual school ones that they would give you with no container. No. Just a loose bag of milk on your desk that you'd have to put a straw the fucking in craziest and just thing suck I've ever it heard. until it was a dry flap of plastic. God, what I wouldn't do to fucking be that milk. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. At any rate, uh, yeah, don't don't write in again, Becky. Let's continue the discussion <laughs> on our Discord. Yeah, patreon.com slash ghostfacers for only $1 a month. 
you can join Angel Radio, our awesome community Discord server, and chat about the show, and tell us uh, cool stuff. I don't really want your opinions about the sandwich segment. I know it's good. <laughs> Unless you support me. Unless you support me. In that, in that case, let, let the pr- keep the praise. Uh, you know that whole thing where you have to, if you take the good, you have to take the bad, too, equally? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's not how I roll. It's the facts of life. Well, uh you can uh, uh, give us a note about a past or future episode yeah. uh, by emailing us like Becky did from ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com. We love those. Or you can reach out to us through our various social media platforms. Ghostfacers Pod, baby, wherever you find your... Um, uh... Don't forget to subscribe. She to really me. fucking got under my <laughs> skin with that sandwich segment <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, surprisingly have a very thin skin. Who does that? Yeah. <laughs> Who would do this? <laughs> Easy. No. It's a it's an injustice you will that will not be for Becky, time. I'm you know, I, thank you for writing in. I'm gonna send you a bottle of sake. Oh no. <laughs> Just a sake this. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to write. You know, the death by sandwich in kanji. <laughs> I can't do it. Just comes out racist. Weird how that happens. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you currently are listening. And while you're there, I want you to give us a five-star review. If it's not an Apple podcast, make sure that you take a photo of it and send it to us so that we can read it on a future episode. Also, if you want to get a t-shirt that says, I support the one Japanese chef, yeah, you can get that. We need like at least five of these t-shirts to make it up on the <laughs> yeah. com. Yeah. Uh, also, if you like the content on here, you might be a little interested in what we talk about on our other show. Sorry, just one second. Uh-huh. I think what the shirt should be, yeah. you know how Samara like crawls out of the TV? Sure. It should be like Samara, but just like passed out out of the TV, like oh, holding. That's, I mean, that's holding just, a bottle. That, that exists just at Spencer's, I think. Yeah. And that's just like a, it's like a shojo shirt. That's funny. That's, that's a, just good. So yeah, that's just go. a good idea. That's, I know. I'm cutting. I'm full it. of good ideas, Becky. Yeah, just maybe not segments. I swear to fucking god. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can subscribe to our other podcast, the Doctor DC Podcast. Dr. DC Podcast, we talk about DC Comics and superheroes, uh, the Justice League and all that kind of stuff. We answer listener questions. And if you like how we talk about lore and monsters and stuff like that over here, you might enjoy how we talk about that stuff over there. Also, if you are on the East Coast uh, you and you want to see us, well, you've got an opportunity to do so. Yeah. We're going to be at the Toronto Fan Expo, August 24th to the 27th. That's right, baby. We're going to be uh, at the Canadian Podcast Awards booth periodically through the weekend and uh, possibly doing other stuff too when we've got a fuller schedule we'll let everyone know but yeah come come to toronto fan expo come say hi yeah come come my baby come come, come my, my baby come come my baby you're my butterfly you're my shoujo fly sugar drink up baby <laughs> from a bag milk oh yeah and wash it down with a sandwich <laughs> i think we're getting further from it say goodbye bitch jerk podcast.